Nike's tagline doesn't say just try it above the or below the swoosh. It says just do it. So the line between where you want to be and where you are right now starts with action. It starts with action. Whatever it is that we can give, we give. So what can you do? You could start doing something. Start doing something, moving the needle. You want to you want to create a big event? Start reading about some of the greatest events that were ever invented. Start reading and learning from the masters. Start finding people that have done it. Guess what? I have never turned down a conversation about how we started the wine festival. I've never turned down a conversation with another organization that said, we want to do something similar. How can we do it? Now, a lot of those end with them saying, that's way too much work. I don't, have, I don't want to get into that. In fact, most of them end that way. But you don't have to be that person. You can be the catalyst. The, the, the stepping stone of where you want to get to starts with the action of giving. And the action of giving means you're giving of yourself, whatever it is that you're good at. We talked in another chapter about the importance of creating the legacy today. Not when you feel you're ready, but today, <laughs> even when you feel that you're not. And I want to actually delve into, as we look into chapter five, where you talk about truly making an impact, how you were able to do that. And I want to start off with this question, and these are your words, these are not mine. <laughs> what, if you have ne what if you had never gone into that Rotary Club's first sad spaghetti dinner fundraiser? Like, you ever think about that? What if you had never gone to that sad spaghetti dinner? Yeah, for, I mean, for me, I think about it, right? Because it really was eye-opening. Number one, um, spaghetti is really important to me. And... I'm Italian. I grew up with a Sicilian grandmother and I was the firstborn grandson in, in that house. I spent many, many a days in her kitchen cooking sauce and meatballs. And it was something that to this day, when I think of my grandmother, my mouth waters from the food that she cooked. And it's my, mo it's, it's my fondest memory of our connection was built around food and spaghetti and sauce. I mean, I didn't ever go over there where she didn't have a little tiny container of two meatballs that she pulled aside just for me when, when she cooked my grandfather dinner and she didn't do the whole elaborate dinner for everybody else. As she got older, she would have this little side thing. And as, and as I got older, she'd have little ones for, for other grandchildren who also had it and who loved that. And so this was something that to me was a... a, a a connection, a cultural connection, something deeper than just a spaghetti dinner. So when I volunteered for it, I was like, it's a no brainer. I didn't know I was going to walk into the set of Billy Madison with, with, with cafeteria ladies, you know, the, in the cauldron with watered down spaghetti. And I, I couldn't even call it sauce. It was so horrible. It's the kind of sauce that you put on someone's plate and it runs everywhere. Like that's water. That's that Americanized chili. That, that people call spaghetti sauce. I, I, I know that, that um, it sounds funny, but I literally wanted to go back and help them cook it. I was like, oh, we can fix this. It's okay, we can fix it. But it was an event where I just, I honestly saw the impact that this service organization, this Rotary Club could be making. I, I'm so proud of our Rotary Club. I mean, the, the, the group is amazing humans who have been doing great things well before I ever came into this club. I'm one person. But, but when I joined and I saw an event and I saw the impact that it was making was very small and the people in the room were larger than life, people I dreamed of emulating when I first joined, I thought, how can we connect the dots? How can we solve something? And like most good things, it came from a complaining session where I went over to my aunt and uncle's house and we we're sitting down and I was like, you had me go to the spaghetti dinner and you knew it was bad. Like you knew. And, uh, and we started laughing. And he was like, what, what do you think we should do? And, and that's where we started talking about a wine festival. And it also is where we started talking about something that how many people have ideas in their life how many ideas do you have right now where you're surrounded by the wrong people? Well, I was surrounded by the right people because we talked about it. I pitched why it was a great idea and what the club could do and how it would work. And I started going off on different tangents. Before I got home from the 20-minute drive, I had emails in my email box 
of Rotary clubs that had done wine festivals across the country that he had found to support my idea. Just a little spark, right? An idea is nothing without execution, without belief in the idea, without someone else's belief sometimes. For every Zuckerberg that created this, somebody probably told them it was stupid, but somebody told him it was a good idea. Maybe it was those two, two brothers who came up with it and he stole it, who knows? I don't know how it works, but the key component is the idea went to execution because of a combination of things. And the Rotary Club Spaghetti Dinner was that perfect example. And it turned into a wine festival with 8,000 people and $150,000 to charity in year one. We had no idea what we were doing. We had never run an event that size. I had never led an event that size. I was lucky enough to be able to co-manage it and, and co-found it with my uncle who I had only known as my uncle, not as a businessman, not as someone who I worked with, not as someone who could develop something and make it better and take the ideas and bring them to fruition and create meetings and things that I would never have been able to get. I talk in the book about generational diversity and, and the ability for two generations to leverage what each other doesn't have it's so empowering. And so, you know, the spaghetti dinner is, is a joke that we all laugh about today. It, the board like voted this thing through to do the wine festival, by the way, like it won by one vote over like some kind of barbecue or shrimp fest, which you never see in our area. I'm being funny, obviously. You see them way too often and they're great. They're great events. We didn't need another one. So, you know, ultimately it was different and now we're going on 13 years, you know, two and a half to three million dollars of, of, of impact made to the community right here. And that doesn't include the other ones we've been able to consult on or the side events we've been able to create or the network that's built out of this. It's just unbelievable. And it started from dissatisfied um, energy. I was dissatisfied with what could be and what was happening. I could still see myself serving drinks to people in the cafeteria and me being embarrassed that I brought my family here to eat and now we're gonna have to go somewhere else and eat because no one ate that stuff. Nobody, no one in my family ate that stuff. And I didn't even eat it, I couldn't even eat it. I was starving, I couldn't eat it. I was 29 years old. And you know, I, I say all that because you know, it comes back to loving what you do. I was drawn to it because it was something that I was drawn to when I was young. The energy and culture of my grandparents, the energy and culture of my big family, my big Italian Catholic family, which I'm proud of, my aunts and uncles, my parents, all that stuff is what I thought about from the simple word spaghetti dinner. And so when I went in, I had big expectations. And when they weren't met, I didn't just complain about it, I tried to solve it. And I tried to give back to this group that I hadn't even barely been a member in for months. And, you know, it was a little scary at the time. I was a little embarrassed at times that I was so forceful and so full of energy, but I'm really, really grateful today when I sit in rooms with some of these people that I'm in a board and there's new board members and they come up with new ideas. And now I start to break the new ideas down. No, we've already tried that, it doesn't work. And I remember that energy that I brought to the table early in my career that I need out of the same people that are bringing it now. Now, 13 years after you started the Chesapeake Wine Festival, the impact is clear in our community, right? The money, the volunteer hours, the businesses it's helped build. Honestly, if you're thinking about all the people that have gotten work through this behemoth of an event. But when you started, you were a guy with an idea. Right, a young guy with an idea, and you said something in another video, in another chapter, about this give and take, right? When you're young, you don't necessarily have the funds, but you have a lot of ideas. And in some cases, like the wild ideas, um, which some of them, some of the older members of the Rotary Club maybe thought at the time. But then when you're older, you have maybe a little more in your pocket, and not as much time, and maybe not as much of the ideas happening because you're building your business, you're growing your family, whatever. And so I just, I think it's an interesting dynamic as people who are listening to this to really think about where they are 
on the spectrum and what they can offer no matter where they are, right? Yeah, So can perfect. you talk a little bit about that as kind of, there, there's a place for you no matter where it is. Join the Rotary Club, don't join the Rotary Club, find another club, it doesn't right. matter, but wherever you are, you have a perspective that offers value. Yeah, where are you now and where do you want to be, right? Mm -hmm. Then we decide how you want to get there. This is financial planning, which is our career, right? It's, it's a great correlation. The, the key component is wherever I'm at, I use this. You've heard it in my other videos if you watch any of them. Nike's tagline doesn't say just try it above the, or below the swoosh. It says just do it. So the line between where you want to be and where you are right now starts with action. It starts with action. Whatever it is that we can give, we give. So what can you do? You could start doing something. Start doing something, moving the needle. You want to you create a big event? Start reading about some of the greatest events that were ever invented. Start reading and learning from the masters. Start finding people that have done it. Guess what? I have never turned down a conversation about how we started the wine festival. I've never turned down a conversation with another organization that said, we want to do something similar. How can we do it? Now, a lot of those end with them saying, that's way too much work. I don't, have, I don't want to get into that. In fact, most of them end that way. But you don't have to be that person. You could be the catalyst. The, the, the stepping stone of where you want to get to starts with the action of giving. And the action of giving means you're giving of yourself, whatever it is that you're good at. And so, you know, in the book, I, I have the, the, the three circles of passion and, and business and relationships and I, I always think about this because this is where true fun and great things come about. You know, I was able to take some of my best relationships, family, my uncle, my, one of my very best friends in the world, Josh, is, is, is in the wine business. And we get to work together every year. We absolutely love it. We geek out and crack up and, and some of the things that we, we build in the wine festival, even the wines we offer, sometimes are things that we love that we know other people will like as well. And it's fun. It's the relationships. It's getting to know my uncle in a way that taught me things that I would never have known if he was just my uncle. Instead, I was able to learn these things by, by really working, getting our hands dirty together, arguing at times, disagreeing at times, learning from each other, learning how to be better. You know, there were so many moments that I grew from. And then the business side, right? You go in year one, you're like, well, maybe, because every single new fresh business owner says, what's the ROI to me? What's my ROI? This will probably be good for business. It wasn't years later that I saw any ROI directly from the wine festival where I could say, oh, that came from business from the wine festival. But I could never, ever, ever quantify the amount of trust and value that I was able to build in our community for me, for me to give more of myself to the community. They built trust in me to be the kind of person that when I say, hey, we're gonna do this, people believe it. That was worth way more than business could ever have come in from ROI. It was huge. And then passion, right? You know what got me interested in a wine festival? I had gone to my first one in Norfolk a couple years earlier and I was blown away. Like, how did I not know this existed? This is so fun. And then Virginia Beach had one and they had done a great job. And I was, I was like, why are we not doing this here in Chesapeake? And I'd been thinking that from the day I went to those two events, it just culminated at a time where I was able to bring, hey, I'm, I'm, I joined this group because of business. I joined because of giving back. I happen to have great relationships in this area and I love wine and I love learning about something and I love the relationships you have and the conversations all in this area. They come together and what happens? Something really cool that raised a lot of money to charity. And so to your point, I just think that that's that, that culmination of really cool ideas. It's not just the idea, it's who you're around. It's, you know, is it something other people can get behind? Do you have belief in you and what you're trying to accomplish? And is it bigger than yourself? Not just about you. Like I get, we get pitched on stuff all the time that's just about the person. It's about how it's gonna help them in the transaction, not you and your business. 
And that's, that's really such a big thing. I want you to talk a little bit more about this idea of something that is bigger than yourself. Right? So, and, you know, I kind of keep going back to when you started, the year you started the wine festival. You didn't know. I mean, you were maybe thinking, I think this could be big, right? But you didn't really know. So Thank think, God. Right. You <laughs> I probably wouldn't have done it. it right? right. But this idea of, um, of, of being part of something bigger than yourself, you talk about it a lot. And I'd love to hear your take on what someone... Um, what someone can get out of that, right? Because I've, I've talked with you enough where I know it. And it, it, it means a lot to me because I hear it in your voice, right? But I would love for you to, to tell us more a little, uh, to tell us more about this whole idea of, and I'm, and I'm not really doing a great job in, in explaining what I want you to talk about. But I know about, what you mean. Is, is, is what happens that keeps you going when you've got two kids at home, and your wife wants you to be at home and not doing this, what keeps you going is that idea of something bigger than yourself and why, does, why is that even so important? Yeah, you know, first of all, something bigger than yourself is about creating something that lives on after you're gone. If I, if I was gone tomorrow, this wine festival keeps going without me. That's bigger than me. You know, my family, it's bigger than me. I mean, the ultimate greatest example of something bigger than yourself is what you do as parents. And to the children that watch these things, it's what your parents do for you. Like they're your Uber driver. They feed you every night. They clothe you. They do everything. Everything they do is for you. And if you don't have that kind of life, it's what you will do when it's your turn because you change that, right? But, but the truth is, my children and our family live on. Our relationships live on. This, these videos, you know, one of the, the greatest catalysts for me wanting to create stuff like this is, is knowing that this lives on. I love the fact that you can put this on social media and if I were gone tomorrow, the way I feel about something, the way I think, the true way I think, because I think a lot of people put out in the world what, what they want you to think they think. But what I'm talking about is what I believe my kids, my boys can watch this one day and they could say, hey, my dad really felt strongly about this. There's a connection. That's, those are leave on assets. They're, they're, they're live on and leave on assets. They're things that grow after you're gone. And if they go away, they're stories that live on. You know, they're stories big enough that live on. We're building a company that we want to live on, well beyond one person. And so when I say build something bigger than yourself, it's really important to me. You know, I was on uh, a text the other day with someone we're looking at, at um, working together in a larger capacity, and they have some really great ideas, and I, I feel really lucky to be in the room and working together. Um, but I, I just, I texted them, Listen, I really believe that one plus one can equal 10 times with the right ones in the room. And, and I want you to think about that. One plus one equals two in traditional math. But one plus one, if you are huge catalysts and game changers and you're working and the energy is bigger than you even thought it could be, you can create something 10 times or more valuable. And Roland and I were a one plus one equals 10 times. You know, we, we alone were doing good things. Together, we're creating something much bigger. Roland went on to serve in the city council, have an enormous community impact and continues to do so today, which he was already doing before, but it's more public today. You know, we still work together on these things. This individual, this one plus one equals 10 times is about the right ones being in the room. Who are the ones you're with? Are they the kind of people that amplify your life by 10 times? Or are they kind of people that, that, that actually are one minus one equals zero? Because a lot of times when we're lost, we're lost because we're hanging out with someone who's actually pulling the energy out of us, pulling the energy out of the room. And I have made it a, a common practice to do the opposite. And I, I love it, Cheryl, that you mentioned my wife. Because I think, yeah, I think sometimes when you're doing these things, 
you know, it's not like I'm probably the, the greatest person year one, two, or three. I'm probably not the perfect husband two weeks leading up to this event. I'm, pro I'm a nervous wreck. I'm certainly, um, you know, a little bit anxious. I'm on edge. I'm full of passion. I'm a little bit intense, right? And I can guarantee you there are moments where my wife looks at me and is like, why are you doing all this? But when she sees the impact, you know, I never wanted my wife and my family to have to work the event. My favorite, one of my favorite parts of our wine festival is we have a private chalet that we have, which is just a tent area where a couple of businesses all came together and we, we have our family and friends and clients and everybody celebrates inside this space. But every time I think of the wine festival, I think of my wife and my family, my mom and dad and my sister and her family, our, my brother-in-laws, my sister-in-laws, everybody sitting around a table having a great time. And I was a part of creating that. I was a part of creating those memories that they'll have forever. That gives me chills. That's powerful and it's well beyond me. When I'm gone, they will have those memories They'll have those moments and they'll have those stories and maybe they'll create something just as big or bigger with their families and their traditions and their stories. Mm, that's beautiful. And they will, right? They'll always I know they will, it's, yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, I want to switch gears as we wrap up this chapter talking about habits. And you make a habit of making an impact. You in particular, as you, as you know, you, can, you think about the work you've done with the Boys and Girls Club and with the Rotary Club and other organizations that you're involved with locally. How do you actually make it a habit? And, and you know, we've talked about your, your thoughts on making an impact before, but, but the habit part is the part I really wanted to delve in on, especially when people, you especially too, feel stretched in so many areas. How do you make it that habit? Something that you do every day, something that you do every week? First of all, you don't know you can make a difference until you do. So part of it, again, goes back to action. The, the biggest thing is, is that it's not something that you can just do. I think, I love using sports analogies because it, you look back on your life, if you've ever been an athlete of any kind, and the more you practiced, the better you got. It's a common recipe. It's called the practice of medicine. The more a doctor practices their trade, the better of a doctor they become. The more a financial advisor practices the trade of helping people with their financial world, the better they become. This is the same habit. You know, Aristotle says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And if you want excellence, if you want to be exceptional, you have to be the exception. And you have to focus on that as a part of your life. And I think it's a prioritization. So what can you do right now? What's the action steps, right? At the end of this book, in every chapter, we have action steps of what we can do. First of all, are you prioritizing impact? Are you prioritizing these, these deeds? Have you seen the positive result? And by the way, you don't always see it right away. So if you only did it once, I used to do big events where I would, where they were big. Um, I used to do, uh, I'm, I'm saying that funny because when I started doing them, nobody came. You know, when I do a presentation, when I first became a financial advisor, I, I would invite thousands of people and two people would show up in the public library. And then the next week, or the next month, the next three months, we do the next event, whatever it was, 10 would be there, 15, 22. You know, it got to the point where we were doing events with 100 plus people. And, and I've spoken to thousands of people today when at one time I started only speaking to two. I have to gauge where I'm at today in a level of success as well. Like if I'm thinking I'm gonna make multi-millions of dollars of impact, and I may just be starting out, maybe I need to just reshuffle where I'm at right now and assess those little tiny moments and be happy with the tiny muscle I'm building towards the act of giving, the act of impact, the action steps of just doing it, not just trying it. And you know, that's, 
I think that's such a great question. I think you did a great job of, of asking that because um, I think people want to know how they get moving in the right direction. And this chapter is not about just financial advisors. You know, a lot of this stuff came about because I get to deal and talk to financial advisors in the last chapter of their career. And they're looking at what do they do when they stop working? Well, this is anyone, right? I've sat in this office right here in this seat talking to people about what they want to do in retirement. And they're like, I have no idea. When you've done things in your life that make daily impacts, you fill the schedule so quickly, you will have nothing but ideas. Very, very important. And you will never sit in someone's office and say, I don't know what I'm going to do when I retire. Or you never have to retire at all because you keep doing everything that you're doing. But we get to see that on a daily basis. And I love that because it helps us share with everybody what we see all the time. 